how's it going everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to the kitchen and welcome back to a whole new angle, which I think will just make the whole video and watching and recording process a lot easier and a lot better. Um, so in today's video, I'm making a bit of a favourite of mine that I discovered last year. And I think it was on the BBC Food website. Uh, and it's corned beef hash. Now, what an easy dish. And you might think, oh, corned beef. But honestly, stick with me on this because it is so good. It's so easy and like cheap to make as well. And it's one that will feed the whole family. So what we need for this is, you need your butter, your milk, because you're going to make some mashed potatoes. 400 gram of potatoes is all you need, which for me is just two potatoes. This is 450. I quickly weighed it just to check. So you really don't need much. Uh, one onion, I'm using just two little ones, because uh, I buy the one potato bag. A um, bit of ketchup, some beans, and obviously some corned beef. Now I've tried all this stuff out, obviously uh, these are from Aldi. Now these uh, are the best and cheapest uh, like for what they cost. Uh, beans and corned beef you'll get. Absolutely fantastic quality. Um, this is 96 pence as well for four tins. This is about a pound something for the corned beef and I've done this with it before and it's perfect. So the first thing I'm going to do is we're going to get these peeled and get them boiling. So yeah, whilst I'm just peeling these potatoes, I just want to know like what you think about this new setup, the angles, everything. Uh, because obviously you'll have seen by now um, that I've got guinea pigs who take up all of the bar area now. So obviously this is also going to be where um, Bill's reviews probably get filmed and things like that. I mean, I mean I'll probably record some from my desk but I do want to have my own little area. Now the cooking videos I'm hoping as long as everyone thinks this is like a good way to do it I'm going to do them all like this. Um, and uh, I'll do other videos from here as well like my next upload I'm making some cocktails um, so I'll be doing them from this angle too because obviously I need the kitchen I can have everything set up and you can look and uh, things like that, yeah. Um, obviously, I have to juggle some things around to get this set up up because obviously this is like the dining table, move back from all the way in the dining like room and things like that. But yeah, just let me know what you think down in the comments because I'd like to carry on doing this if uh, you all think it's a bit better than what I normally do. Okay, so the potatoes are now behind me. Just uh, I've just put the heat on so they'll start cooking through soon. They'll not take long because there's not much of it. So now I'm going to peel and chop up the onions nice and fine and get them frying. Okay, so whilst those are frying, the onions that is, um, we are going to attempt, that's not the best start in the world, to open the corned beef. The most difficult tins you'll ever have to open. I've even resorted before in the past to chopping one up. What the fuck? So, we're hacking out. Do you know when you watch Strongman on telly, they should put this challenge into it. This is just to find the winner, the final. Right, someone open a, kin a tin of corned beef. There we go now. The Aldi one, again, I know I always big up Aldi a lot, and there's a reason for it. It's cheap prices and fucking fantastic product. The Aldi corned beef is actually the easiest one to get into too. Um, I bought, oh, what's it called? I can't remember what the actual make is. Like, you know, the proper one. Um, and every time I bought that at, which costs like two to three pounds as well per tin, um, it just snaps off straight away. Whereas this, even though, yeah, don't get me wrong, it's stiff. I mean, you're asking, oh no, you're asking metal <gasps> to rip. Do you know what? I've jinxed myself. Look at the state. So it's going well, it's going well. And then just here it's kinked because I've been chatting about the tins. So let's try and rectify this. Ah, so join me wall with this. Look away if you're a bit freaked out by blood, but we're currently losing the battle with with, with the tin. <laughs> so um off to the plasters we go. So the only plasters we actually have in the house are kids' ones and super big. So I'm not being dramatic, this is all we had left. So that So, I managed to get into it in the end, um, and we 
we've got it all spread out now in there, chopped and crumbled up. And now on top of that, obviously Matt's had the onion fried, so we're just going to chuck them on top of it. Now it doesn't matter about getting it even or anything like that because we are going to mix it all together in a moment. So now beans into there, get them all out. Again, doesn't matter about <coughs> putting them in evenly or anything like that. So Yep, there you go, that's them all out. And then a generous dollop of ketchup into it. Sounds weird, I know, but trust me. So, there we go. And now, we're going to mix it all together. Nothing is locking there. So, just give it a good old mix. Honestly, I know this looks messy and it looks weird, but it's so nice. I absolutely love it. Um, I've actually, my, my son loves all things like cheese and beans and things like that and I've never made it in before so he's going to be having some of this when he gets up from his nap for dinner. There we go. Just, just move it down a bit with back end at spill. And I wasn't going to use this much, I was going to use a metal one because it's a bit easier. It don't stick as bad to so metal one but there you go. And now we're just waiting for the potatoes to boil a bit still, this should nearly be done. Um, so stop things on it and we can make our mash. Okay, cool, so the potatoes are done and ready to be mashed. Now this, I used to make really nice mash, like, don't get me wrong, my mash always tastes good, but recently I've been making soap to it because I always make lumpy mash, and it is doing my head in. Now it's like, butter, milk and all that is up to you. I like buttery mash, um, so I just put a generous amount in, uh, and then obviously I add a little bit of salt in too, just for flavour. Um, and then, of course, you need to add in milk. So, get that chucked in now, then we can get mashing. Um, obviously, you might have your own way of doing it. You might not want to make your own mash. You know, you can buy those, uh, what's it called now, packets of smash, which are, uh, I'm not going to lie, quite nice. Uh, in fact, B&M do some pots, pots of mash powder with like 39p. There's plenty of ways you can cheat it. It doesn't matter. You know, I won't judge you, not because mash can be so bloody awkward to make. Do you know what though? I think I'm doing alright this time. Okay, so now we need to just dollop the mash on top. No particular order. I try to do it just in like scooped, you know, piles or balls, whatever you want to refer to it as. Just all the way across. Smells good this match. I don't even have to do the taste test today. It smells good. And I've really done well for once. I mean, I had to get lucky with something today after I sliced the thumb open on, on the tin. Uh, so we're going to put this over here in the sink. And then just with the back of your fork, just smooth it down. Obviously, you want to have preheated your oven to 180. So, hopefully, you've watched through this first and you're not just now going, Dominic, you asshole, and I need to preheat my oven. There we go, perfect. But we're not putting it in just yet because it's gonna have some cheese on it. Cool. So, I've just cut this off of my big block, but we might go back for more. And I never grate it onto a plate or anything like that, or even onto it. I'm just gonna grate it on top. Generous amount, you know, there's no such thing as too much cheese, unless obviously you're lactose intolerant. Um, I'm just going to go nuts with it. Okay, cool. So, that's it. It's all prepped and ready. So, this is what we've got. Nice and cheesy. So, it looks all the way through. It's so simple, obviously, unless you're battling with the core beef team like me. So, now it's going into the oven for 30 minutes. And we want it nice and crispy. Okay, so that's it. It's all done. It looks fantastic. It, ah, like I say, it's one of the most simple things you could make. It's perfect for this time of year now where, you know, all weather's crap, it's cold, it's comfort food. You know, it's either, you know, it's either four big portions or if you want to put it with something, I don't know what though. Um, you can make it into more, I guess. Uh, obviously for me, I'm going to do it probably two normal portions and like three for kids. Uh, it's so good. Anyway, let me show you it up close. Okay, so... Here we go, we're just going to cut a nice big piece out. Oh yeah. That's all. Oh, it smells incredible. There we go. Obviously, some of the insides will just need scooping out afterwards. 
I know it. I I thought when I first made it, it just looks like slop, like dog food. Honestly, take my word for it. It tastes amazing and it's 100 percent worth making. So I hope you enjoyed this video. There'll be plenty more to come just like this. Um, I really feel comfortable with this new setup, so I'm most likely going to continue. Just let me know what you think down in the comments. Let me know what you think of this down in the comments. Let me know if you give it a go. Drop me a like if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe, obviously, if you're not already. And if you are, make sure that bell's here so you see everything that I do. And other than that, I'll hopefully see you in the next video. Bye-bye.